We're going to have more fun today. Um, so today we'll get through writing verses. We'll spend time together writing verses. We'll write bridges. We're going to do a lot of writing today, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'll start again with prayer. <clears throat> Thanks again for the breakfast. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for another uh, day, uh, for a beautiful day. Uh, thank you for this free air conditioning that we're all enjoying. Um, and then just uh, bless us as we uh, pen words and compose music, that it would be uh, all for your glory alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I'm going to keep the half and half away. I'm going to put you in half and half. I won't judge you. Right now. Are we can bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> I think we know where it's going. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Verses. This one's going to be interesting. It's not so much music related. Like, there's not a lot of musical content in this portion. Uh, the section after this will be very music theory heavy. Um, so let's get started with verses because I think getting verses right mostly has to do with the lyrics we're writing anyway. So verses provide context, support a narrative, and create a pathway to the chorus. I, I want us to think of those three words as we're writing verses. Um, we want the verses to like provide a setting for the message so that the message can be fully understood. That's what I mean by context. Um, narrative. So just like is you can describe events to support a viewpoint we're like kind of shaping the messaging even more with our verses not just with our choruses and then we also want people to kind of follow a logical progression of ideas to arrive at the chorus we start with the verses and we want people to feel like they've been led on a well thought out journey in your um you know idea because we're we're up there on the stage presenting a thesis almost, right? If we are like thinking back to writing in English class, we're presenting a thesis. Our thesis is that Jesus is worthy to be praised. But okay, how do we get there? Um, any evidence we have for that, we put that in the verses. Any like personal reasons we have for that, we put that in the verses. Any like, admon like admonishment or uh, encouragement of, hey, y'all should do something about this. That can go in the verses too because the chorus remains, Jesus is worthy to be praised. So this is what I mean by we're providing context, narrative, and a pathway. And, I, and congregational songs, if you want them to really follow you, then it, it has to have a logical progression to it, just like we talked about yesterday with sermons. The sermon has a point it's trying to make, and if the preacher is any good, he's like laying out evidence in a, in a good way. And then that's how the, the epistles are written, too. The thesis is um, in Romans that Jesus is the only means of obtaining righteousness. And Paul spends a whole letter explaining how. So I have two main things. Well, actually three. So I have three main things about verses I want to share with you all. The first one is the three questions, the big three questions. Where are we? Why should I care? And where is this going? And this is mostly a tool to help overcome writer's block or, to, or maybe it's something you can use after you've written your verses to just like make sure you've kind of hit the basic questions. The, the, if you answer these, people will feel like it's a, a complete thought. So I'm going to use one of my songs as an example, and then I want us to use other songs to, so you can see how this is used. In my song about Job, things too wonderful. Where are we? Is like almost like you're setting the setting. If I lost all that I own, right? When I'm sitting in the ashes, what I'm saying is, I'm presenting in the verses. I'm presenting. I'm grieving. Like whoever's singing is in a time of grief, or talking about a time of grief. And then why should it care? Like why should I care about grieving? And it, will my faith stand? Am I with you? Like I use that language there. I'm posing a question to myself in the song. And then where is it going? Like I'm forced to make the ultimate decision. 
Like, will I forsake or not forsake God during my time of grief? That's what I mean by answering these questions. And that's why it fits so logically to have the response be the chorus. I know you are God. You can do all things. Things too wonderful. And then verse 2 is, uh, I reuse all the lyrics, but I say it in the affirmative, like now I believe it. And it still answers these questions. Now where are we? We are in a, I'm, now I'm a, in a state of belief during a time of grief. I trust God. And that's how I make sure the congregation is following me when we sing the song. They know what the story is. That's a pretty easy one. But if, if you don't mind, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't. It doesn't have to be that. You want. You want at some point in your verses somewhere, for the these questions to be answered. Like if uh, if if all I presented to you were the lyrics to uh, Jesus over everything. You would be able to look at it and look. Okay, so the setting is this. The like the decision it's making you think about is this, or the way it's challenging you, or or what it's asking of you is this. That's what I mean by like, why should I care, or where is this going, right? And then the if you've written the chorus first, this is really easy. Where is this going, right? Just like if you're writing an essay, you want like sentences that help transition to the next paragraph. So you want to think that way too when we're writing lyrics, right? So uh, I think it'll make more sense if we do a couple examples. Uh, let's look up the lyrics to Lamb of God. The Lamb of God in my place. <clears throat> If someone could just start reading verse 1. Uh, he came from heaven's throne. Is that the second verse? No. Nope. Uh, came from heaven, acquainted with thy sorrows, and take the death of our suffering for your freedom. Am I lying? Your suffering is for our Your suffering is for You're lying. That's verse one, right? Okay, so have have we answered one of these questions? Right, like the setting, the setting of the song is like Jesus condescending. Right. So, uh, like, where where are we? Like, what? How is this story starting? It's starting with the setting being Jesus condescending to what? Like, why should I care? He's crazy. Exactly. So, it, how like? How am I? At, what what's my stake in all of this? It's it's our our death, our sin, the wages of sin, and how he's taking that on himself, right? Um, and then is there any language in there pointing to where like this verse might be going with all those thoughts? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, you came from heaven's throne. Your suffering, or our suffering, your suffering for our freedom. Yeah. Okay. And then does that go straight into the chorus or is there another verse? Okay, so then the yeah, so then the chorus is what? The Lamb of God? So that's that's perfect because uh the Lamb of God has to do with what? How the Lamb is sacrificed. The Lamb is the one taking the, the spotless lamb is the one taking all the the punishment instead of us, just like animals sacrificed back then. So that was, that's like someone who well thought out was like, okay, if my destination point is a chorus that uses the, the imagery of the Lamb of God, 
then my verses need to have lots of like propitiation language and atonement and spell that out. Like I need to spell that out for the congregation. And it's it's the meat and potatoes that that will really make the chorus shine more. Does does that make sense? What about the second verse, the Lamb of God? The Lamb of God and my place. So, uh, so what's what's different about verse two versus verse one? Any observations? No, no wrong answers. Well, verse one is past. Verse two is present. Okay. Ish. I mean. Yes. yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. It's more like the first verse. It's like you're you're kind of like saying what's going to happen or what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. That's the why should I care? Yeah. yeah. So it's the, but also say that mm-hmm. Exactly. So it so something super interesting being done there is yeah. to like um if like to drive the point home even more, the I'm going to like basically rewrite verse one, but as your personal experience. And not just like factual. right the like the factual quotes from the epistles of him coming down and being our like salvation. <clears throat> it's in it's like rewritten in more relatable language. You've already heard the chorus, so now you're gonna sing the chorus even be- like even louder now, right? There's no verse three, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So and then um, just. Just to test y'all's knowledge from yesterday, the bridge is there is no greater love, right? What is that in reference to? Yeah, John, what, 15? There is no greater love than this that he would lay his life down for his friends. So if you know that, then the, the bridge is awesome because there is no greater love. There is no greater love, right? That's... Just make it super simple. We'll talk about how bridges can be effective like that. Just super, super simple. Make it very simple. And that actually can be the most powerful thing you can do to reinforce the meaning of the chorus. But do you see how those verses provided the context we needed to like buy into the chorus? Right? So let's just do one more example. <clears throat> Jesus over everything. If we looked up the lyrics to Jesus over everything. If someone could just start reading the lyrics. He came from glory, struck flesh that saved the lost. Grace and mercy displayed upon the cross. Our redemption is for all mankind. One name over everything, one name over everything. Can they keep reading? Um, I think that's the, then, then the yeah, chorus. Yeah. Okay. So, how do we think... Like, are any of these questions answered in those lyrics? Now we're lost. That's where we are. Mm hmm. We also have voices going to the last two lines. The one name of her. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it uses the word everything, so you're like cueing everybody. This is kind of what the song's going to be about. Mm-hmm. What about verse 2? It's kind of similar to the Lamb of God a little bit, but it's a, what it's setting up for is something different, right? It's not setting up a chorus about atonement and setting up a chorus about like it, correct like the evidence for Jesus being over everything is like how he like not only made the world but like had the initiative to save it and he did that himself so that means he has control over everything 
What? So what are the ver lyrics to verse two? Who can rival our resurrected King? One moment he brought death to his enemies, all the powers, all the kingdoms, one name over everything, one name over everything. So n yeah, now that one, the argument it's making is the the pretty much like the not only did he like create everything but he would laid his life down and took it up also so yeah he's like so he created everything and then human kind brought death into the world by sin mm -hmm. he came and conquered over death so this is probably based off of philippians 2 is that what it's based off of like i don't even remember um, but, yeah, <clears throat> Yeah. Exactly. So you're right. The why should I care is the like the how like there's hopelessness. There's language that helps you can find somewhere language that helps someone understand what does this have to do with me? If you want to if you want to reword that. Right? Um and so if if you notice a pattern, if you notice a pattern you really can't go wrong with like our sin predicament always being the answer to this question. Um, our need for salvation always being the answer for, to this question. And um, like Jesus, like point, pointing to Jesus as your savior here. That just like sermons, the gospel should be like somewhere. Yeah. And, and that, ends up, that, that ends up being like, what naturally happens if if you're writing like in line with scripture and in line with truth what naturally happens is just like need for jesus the chorus is jesus right and then maybe the verses after the chorus look how great it is to have jesus um let's sing about jesus that just tends to be the think of it as we're, we're like responsorial like creatures and so our songs tend to be like that too so that's the three questions. It's a tool, all right? And it, it helps you really analyze your verses and how you can make sure you are laying a nice foundation for presenting the chorus. Make sense? Yeah. All right, let's talk about some, something a, a little bit more practical for when you're actually starting to write your verses. And I have just like three strategies, okay? So... You, with your verses, you can tell a story. It can be very, like, narrative, narrative. Like, and death was arrested, alone in my sorrow, and dead in my sin. That is someone telling a story about themselves. Uh, Man of Sorrows is more like, it's telling the story of Jesus in a, like, storybook kind of way. Um, it's not so much like a personal story, like death was arrested. Um, and with you have the tell a story strategy, I mentioned yesterday the before and after effect. The chorus, you want that to be before and after. So before the chorus, uh, our sin predicament can sound very bleak. Uh, and then maybe at the very end of the first verse, you're hinting that there might be hope in, in, the, in Jesus. And then afterwards, after the chorus, the verse can talk about, like, what are the effects of, this, of your salvation? <clears throat> A lot of verses after the chorus a lot of third or second verses maybe sound more like sanctification -y, like what is my role now as a believer, versus in the first one where it's like this is where I was and this is what happened, or this is where, or you can talk about it in the present tense, um, kind of like in Lamb of God, where it was like he came from glory. It's, it's not really talking about us. It's talking about Jesus taking the initiative. Yes, and so it's like, telling a story. Evangelistic. Songs, yeah. But also edification, discipleship elements. So it's exactly, the, exactly. It's the, the mission of the church, lost people saved, saved people, immature mm -hmm. people discipled like that. Absolutely. So yeah, when you sit down, if you have any prompt, you can decide if you want to use one of these three. Maybe you could tell a story. Maybe that's effective. Maybe maybe that's the best way to make it relatable or best way to convey your message. Up to you.
The second one is make observations, also known as the when method. So this, is, this one's super fun. All these three songs, their verses start with the word when. So when all I see is the battle, when, right? Or reckless love is when I was your foe or uh, when I was, all of, all of it was when, when, when. Um, and that just, if you try that, it is the easiest, one of the easiest things because you're setting yourself up for what the next line's going to be. When this, that. When this, that. <clears throat> Christ be magnified is like extremely wordy, but it still does the when method. Like when uh, every creature finds his inmost melody, when every heart is made of Christ. Right? So the chorus is always going to, like, is also like set up well. If you say when, 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 when. Um, so yeah, but what I mean by make observations, because sometimes you, you don't want to, sometimes it doesn't work to just say when all the time. But making observations is like uh, some of the songs we mentioned yesterday where it's like you're, you're, you're stating truths or maybe if you're talking about the sin, like the sin predicament, you can state observations. You're not really giving away that Jesus is the solution yet. Maybe you say that in the chorus or later on. Um, and then the th this third one is ask questions. You can just phrase all your lyrics in the form of a question, like, and behold our God. Like, instead, it doesn't say in the verses, no one can counsel the Lord. It says, who can counsel the Lord? Who can question any of his words? And that's mostly because it's sourced from Isaiah, I think. And in that passage, it is a series of questions. So they, they um, kept that. Who, this, who, who, who. And, and so the answer, the chorus is supposed to be the answer to the question. You ask all these questions, and then the chorus is the answer. So you've written your chorus. Maybe your chorus is, what did I say earlier? Your chorus is, is about uh, Jesus' worthiness to be praised. That's probably Behold Our God, right? Is, is about his worthiness to be praised. So if you're going to do the ask questions, all you have to do is like, okay, you kind of reverse engineer it. What are the questions where the answer is Jesus is worthy to be praised, right? So does that make sense? These are just super practical strategies. And, you, it, and if you keep it consistent, then that might help you with any like writer's block or have it be super focused or not be all over the place. Um, and I, there's nothing wrong with maybe like switching it up between verses and verse. Maybe you're the first half of a stanza can be a couple questions. The second half can be a couple observations. And then you provide your answers. Right, you provide the, the punchline in the chorus. Yeah? All right. So far, what do y'all think about this? Awesome. Really helpful, like, that's a good enough simple thought. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Knowing how to categorize and approach. Mm hmm. Exactly, and if you and if like think about it in terms of um, how do you want them to feel when they're singing it, or how do you want it to come across? If I was asked to write um, a song about Jesus' work on the cross, based off of uh, isn't this Isaiah forty-eight? That one, the suffering? No, fifty-three. Fifty-three. I think it's fifty-three. Where it talks about by his stripes we are healed, man of stars acquainted with grief. If someone came to me and say and said, "Hey, write a write a song," maybe like Good Friday is coming up. Write a song about Jesus and how he died on the cross, and base it off of Isaiah fifty three. Then I would want to ask questions, maybe like make observations, maybe, but maybe like the most effective idea would be to let's just. It's for a Good Friday service. Let's just tell the story of Jesus, right? So if that's the kind of thinking you can do. And you, and you, just, you should just stick to it, and it'll make sense. It'll help the song make sense and help you write. So the last thing before we do our 
before we break out and write some verses. Um, I want to talk about balancing content evenly with the chorus. So I spent all night working on these animations. So hold your applause. So the uh, if your verses if your verses are theology heavy, then like don't also put a lot of imagery in your verses. Save that for the chorus. If your verses are wordy, then save like use some brevity in the chorus. Yeah. If your verses the if your verses have syncopated rhythms in the melody, if then use like nice and square easy rhythms in the chorus because you want to you, you don't want to like have everything be in you can applaud now before the animation but you don't you don't want you don't want all of that to be on one side right and so it also it someone blurted this out earlier give them a break you do want to give them a break if um, so, for example, um, the Jesus over everything I think is a good example between these two. So the verses are uh, our hope to save, uh, our redemption. Uh, nah, nah. So, but, but the chorus, in comparison, is like mm, 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 super easy. Like everyone can join for that part, right? Um, but what about something like um, uh, Christ be magnified? I think is good at this balance, the wordiness and brevity. So the verses are super wordy. But in the chorus, it's just be it's just the words Christ be magnified over and over again, just like restated differently. Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Right. So. If the chorus was also if the chorus was also super wordy, everyone would just be exhausted yeah. after that song. But also the theology, uh, I think those two songs are good at that too. Or like uh, Lamb of God, we talked about Lamb of God earlier. There's tons of theology in that verse, that first verse, but the imagery is in the chorus, the Lamb of God in my place, right? So that's what I mean by balancing you. It's just another way you can kind of critically look at the lyrics you're writing and ask yourself, um, could my chorus afford to be simpler? Could my verses uh, afford like more stuff in it? And I'm not saying you can't have wordy choruses. Like you can, if your verses are really bare bones, then you can uh, have a, like a long wordy chorus and that won't bother people because they, they're not like exhausted or trying to catch their breath from a wordy verse. Does that make sense? Awesome. There's actually, we'll actually uh, talk about writing modern hymns. So, um, but yeah, so hymns, hymns you have to adjust with like how if, if they don't have refrains, if they have refrains, then you want to you want to try to do this just for modern sensibilities. But if they don't have refrains, like yet not I, but through Christ and me, um, then there are other things you are doing. There's the A section to each verse and the B section. Then you, there are there are things you want to do for both of them. So uh, that that one, for example, the first few lines usually have to do with context the second the last half of the each verse has to do with how that affects me and how I will hold fast to Jesus so see how it kind of fits that pattern of we're still providing context we're still making a narrative and uh, like pointing people towards the chorus but the chorus is now the second half of each verse so that, that's the that's just the adjustment you have to make if you're going to write a modern hymn so anyway Let's get on with some writing. Let's do some writing, yeah? yeah. So I've, I wrote a chorus, and y'all are going to write verses for it. So this is super, super basic words. 
Um, if you want to like voice record this so that when you go off, you can like, oh, what, what did we just sing? So this one, loosely based off of the Psalms, mostly based on Psalm 100. Okay, so you can use that if you want for as your source text, as your writing verses. And then the, this is the arrival point. You know, the verses are supposed to lead us here, right? So, oh, I will bless your name for all my days. I fix my gaze in you. You will never fail. Your love is sure. Your love endures. Your love endures. Super, super simple, right? <laughs>